Hi everyone, how are you today? Doing great? Yay! So today, my goal with this talk is going to surprise you with a feature that pretty much everyone already knows about, and that's template reference variables. So the story of this talk started a few months ago. I was writing a blog post on template reference variables. And as I did this, I thought, wow, there's actually a lot more to this feature that we usually think about. So after I was done uh, writing this blog post, I said, well, this would be a great talk for a five-minute uh, talk at ng-conf. So I applied for it, and there I am today. So it's a first kind of magic already. So let's dive into it now. So template reference variables in Angular are a way to get a reference to an HTML element. So I usually call this the hashtag syntax because, well, we just have this uh, tiny hashtag here that we add to an element to get a reference to it. And what we can do with that is Basically, if I apply to this input here, what I get is a reference to the HTML element. So I can access any property like the ID, the CSS classes, the value, anything you like. And in this example here, I'm basically getting the value of that input and passing it to, uh, to my component whenever we click a button. So because of this, I don't need any data binding in my component. I don't need any ng model. Everything just happens in the template. Now, when we apply this uh, hashtag syntax on a component, what we get instead of a reference to the HTML element is a reference to the actual component instance, which means I can access any property or method of that component outside of the template of, of that component. So this could be helpful if, let's say, this component was a pop-up window. I could have a button that would just trigger the pop-up to show up uh, outside of that template. So that's a, a, a very good use case for it. And uh, surprisingly enough, this also works with private or protected uh, members in JIT mode, of course. In AOT, you would get some, some issues with that. But uh, that's, that's what it is. So does this also work with directives? The answer is, is yes. And when we use uh, this hashtag syntax with a directive, so we have to pass the name of the directive that we want to get a, a reference to. And in that case, that's a very common use case. You've probably seen that in the Angular documentation or used it yourself in the past. Uh, we, we're getting a reference to the ng-form directive so we can display the validation state of uh, the form. So is it valid, is it dirty, touched, untouched, and so forth. Now the thing with that syntax is that where is the ng-form directive actually applied to my form, right? Because there is no ng-form attribute up here on, on my form. So how does this work? In order to find the answer, we can go to the Angular website and dive into the documentation. And there is this great feature here where it is highlighted on the screen where we can just, in one click, get to the source code of any uh, class of the framework. So that's what I did, and, and that's the info I got right away. When we get to the source code of the ng-form directive, we see that uh, it applies to any form by default because the selector of the directive is designed that way. It would apply to any form that doesn't have the ng no form nor the form group uh, attribute. So that's how it works, and that's why ng form gets applied to any form by default. And the second interesting thing to see here is the export as a property of the decorator. And this basically exports the directive with a public name, so that whenever we want to get a reference to that directive, the public name for it is ng-form. So now we know the entire story, and it was right there in the source code right, right in front of us. So now the icing on the cake was um, with template reference variables is that we can also 
uh, retrieve them from our components or directive using the at child decorator. So if you apply this hashtag syntax in your template, you can also get a reference to that variable in your TypeScript code using at child and then passing the name of the reference variable in here so that you can ha have access to those properties in your TypeScript code as well. So a few takeaways from uh, this talk. Use template reference variables. It's very easy. It does bring a lot of interesting features to the table. And just like many things in Angular, there's always interesting lesser known use cases to all of these features. So when we start diving into it, we see, oh, there's actually much more we can do with it. And in order to figure that out, don't be afraid to be curious and do just like I did. Go to the source, and you'll get many uh, interesting answers. So if you need any extra info or need any help, uh, that's what I do. I run angulartraining.com, so feel free to come to me. Uh, my Twitter handle is open. My email is always open. And thanks, thanks a lot for your attention. That was template reference variables in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you.